once again, I thank you so much for joining us for our weekly CPACA webinars. Um, we do have some new people on the line today, so before I get started, I just want to remind everybody that if they have a question, they can get those questions answered during our open forum at the end, either by raising your hand, and I'll unmute you and you can ask the question live, or you can type your question into the question box below and we'll answer them um, at the end. So hopefully you'll take advantage of that. Just uh, as always, if you're new, this is not going to make sense to you, but if you're an old school gal or poor guy, um, if you could just give me a little hand wave if you can see my screen, which seems to be a, a challenge for me. I don't see any hands. There I see a hand. Okay. All right. Excellent. All right. So today we have, you know, once again, a rather full agenda. And as mentioned previously, what we're trying to do it, during the off cycle for the open enrollment period is you know, just bring in some added value by bringing in some guest speakers. You know, again, we feel here at URL, um, it, it's our obligation to our agent partners to help them not only recognize opportunity, but to help them to go out and, and give them the tools to get those opportunities and secure those opportunities. So today, we are having our guest speaker, uh, Jim McDaniel. He's our director of marketing and advertising. And he's going to go over some of the tools on URL's website that I think will definitely benefit you um, in many ways. So I really thank Jim for joining us today. I'm going to hand over the, uh, the screen to Jim, and he's going to get going. All right. Well, thanks, Deb. Thanks, everybody, for coming today to see uh, this brief presentation on my URL. And it's a section of our website, basically, where you can go to see your own cases, what your contracts are where you could get commission information and what your trip points are. And there's a couple other things that I'll, I'll show at the end with announcements, updates, and some training information. But uh, basically, to get into my URL, you're going to start from our home page. And you'll log in here. Your login is your email address. And your password is uh, <clears throat> the password is your first letter of your first name your entire last name, and the last four of your social security number. So for the example today, we're using a test agent we have in here, uh, Jim Adelsberger, and he'll log in with his email, jimadelsberger at yahoo.com, and then his password will be jadelsberger6777 if that was the last of his social security number. Or, All right, so I'm going to paste this in here. We'll get logged in. Um, if you get here, if you haven't logged in before, you're not sure what your username, well, your username is your email. If you're not sure what your password is, you can click this button down here. It'll prompt you for your email. It'll be the email that we have on file, and then it'll send you a link. Just like all other websites, you can reset your password to whatever you want it to be. Um, by default, we, sh we enter the one that, that I showed a couple seconds ago. So once you get logged in, It'll, you'll stay on this page. You'll get a little confirmation here, hi, Jim Adelsberger, that you're logged in. And then you can click this link here or this link or this link, wherever you want to click to get to my URL. And it'll take you to that page. And the four things that I'm going to kind of cover in it today are how you can check some case information, some contracting information, where you get your trip points, and just some of the announcements and updates and training. So I'll start with check my URL cases. So if I click on that, it's going to take me into a little report here where I can see some test cases that we've loaded in on Jim Adelsberger's test account. Uh, by default, the status of the cases are going to be transferred to paid. So if you'd want to see something pending or issued or just all of them, then you'd want to change that status. You can filter it by date, by the type of case that it is, the exhaustive list of carriers is here that you can look through to sort it by those specifically. And the other kind of feature also is if you click on one of the cases, it's going to bring up the client information if we have it. We don't always, that's not always entered. Sometimes we don't get it or whatever, and for whatever. But whatever we have would be in here. And I'm going to close this and it takes me back to that report. And the kind of the, uh, the other feature that you can do from here is export all this information to Excel. So you can pull all this out in an Excel spreadsheet, import it into your CRM system, or you know just have it in Excel to sort through and, and look at for whatever you need. 
So that's how you can check some case information. I'm going to go back to the My URL home page here. And the second one I'm going to cover is contracting information. So if you click on Check My URL Contracts, it's going to bring that page up. It's going to show you alphabetically what carrier you're contracted with through URL, what your writing number is or was at one point, and when that contract was initiated. One kind of uh, bit of information on the writing agent number, just because we show a writing agent number doesn't mean that it is still a current valid writing number. Carriers don't often notify us when contracts are terminated for lack of production or for whatever reason, so we don't always know if it's a valid number or not. If you contracted with that carrier in 06 and haven't written since 08, then it's possible that the writing number wouldn't be valid anymore, but it's at least a starting point to where if you did want to get recontracted or if you're an active writing producer with that carrier, then you know that that's a valid, valid accurate number. The other feature from here that you can do with all this information is export that to Excel and you know, use it from there or import it into some type of uh, CRM system that you have. So I'm gonna go, a lot of these areas that I'm going to from my URL can be navigated to from here, but uh, just for ease, I'm going to go back to the home screen here. So the third uh, area real quick is the URL commissions. Uh, it kind of goes to the commission page. If you receive commissions from health carriers that you write through URL, you get to that login from here to check commission statements. There's paydates and other kind of uh, commission information and then contact information there for Brandy. Go back to my URL, and uh, the final kind of button here where you can look at information on your trip points. Click that; it'll bring you to this screen. <clears throat> on the left here, you'll see what the uh, premium pr to get one point is. So, five thousand dollars of senior ancillary gets you one point, and that's kind of the different different levels for the different departments. And then you can see your uh, your pe pending pending business points and the paid business points. So. Currently, Jim Adelsberger has 0.2 points for the President's Club. Not too good. So from that, uh, the last two kind of sections that uh, are some interesting information that you can get from, from the MyURL homepage is this announcements and updates. So anytime we add anything to the website, we've updated a, a form on the Delta Dental page. We added the healthcare reform newsletter link. There's some kind of change to the Geisinger Group page. All that information gets logged here, so if the last time you logged in was February 26th, you'll know that since then, these are the, the changes that we've made to the site. The other, t other feature on this page is any upcoming events that we have c going on. Uh, that'll be the sixth most uh, upcoming events, and you can click any of these links to get more information on them, to register for them, and uh, kind of go from there. So. I, we've had these tools available for a while. A lot of people use them. Kind of found out recently some people weren't utilizing them, so I wanted to make sure that everybody kind of had some knowledge of them. Um, you know, they're tools that we create to help you manage your business. And if uh, anybody has any questions on them, can't get logged in, you're having problems, you want to know more about it, um, I'm at extension 144 and happy to answer any questions. Deb, I'll hang on here for uh, for the end too. If there's any questions that come up uh, during the Q and A at the end, but if uh, that's it, I'm going to pass it over to you. Excellent. All right. Well, thanks, Jim. You yeah, I mean, we we uh, definitely try to make sure that we give you the the right tools, uh, not only to keep abreast of of your your business and track your business, but um, you know, as you'll see, just just trying to again help you to recognize opportunity. So last week, and I'll ask again this week, um, what do you want to learn more about? What is on your mind as far as the PPACA law that you want um, additional clarification on or clarification in general on? And um, I still encourage you to either type that uh, information into the question box because I want to certainly make sure that I'm answering all your questions. But last week, the, uh, the one person that gave a suggestion of what they wanted to learn more about, um, the, the answer was the special enrollment period. So we're just going to briefly go over some of the special enrollment periods. And I think the best source is just going directly to healthcare.gov. They do have an interactive questionnaire. And we're just going to, for our purposes, uh, go in and create the zip code 
enter the zip code for, for URL, and find out if you qualify for a special enrollment period. Continue. Continue. And then it goes through a series of questions. The top question here is relative to the special enrollment period that started on March 15th and runs until the end of this month, April 30th. And this one is pretty interesting. Um, there are three, three uh, parameters that the insured or your, your client has to meet. And the first one is that they can't currently be enrolled in the FSM for 2015. The second one is that they have to attest to the fact that they um, filed their taxes for 2014 and had to pay the individual tax penalty uh, for not having insurance for a portion or all of 2014. And then they also have to attest to the fact that they really only became aware of the implications of not having insurance and the ramifications of the tax penalty um, when they filed their taxes and it was after February 15th. So again, you know, it's more on the honor system um, with the attestations, but uh, the first one's pretty clear. They can't be currently insured, and then the other two really are specific to the tax penalty portion. So that's one of the questions. You can click off yes. Um, did you or anyone in your household lose health coverage in the past 60 days, or do you expect anyone in your household to lose coverage in the next 60 days? Of course, it can't be a voluntary termination of a plan. You can't say, well, I canceled my plan voluntarily 60 days ago, so I'm going to try to see what I can get now on the exchange or off the exchange. Um, and you know, so that's important to keep in mind. Uh, but you do have 60 days to, from the loss of your minimum essential coverage to make application, and that's that hard and fast rule. You can't uh, go beyond the 60 days. Of course, any of these, you get married, had a baby, you adopt a child or had a child placed uh, with you for adoption or, or child care, you got divorced or legally separated and lost health insurance. Of course, all of these is a, a household change. Um, death, of course. Changes in circumstance, you moved outside your health plan's coverage area, had a change in income. Any of these, if you hover over the question box, it's going to give you more specific details. Um, just moving on, changes in status, you gain citizenship or lawful presence in the U.S., release from incarceration. And of course, um, if you are a member of a federally recognized tribe or an Alaskan Native Corporation shareholder and you answer yes, um, then you can get insurance um, during outside of the open enrollment period. So I hope that helped a little bit. If you have more specific questions, and a lot of you do, because uh, you know there are so many different nuances in all of these qualifying events, but I encourage you, if you do have somebody approach you with health and or to get health insurance, and you're uncertain as to whether their circumstance would actually qualify for a, a special election period, give me a call or give your case manager a call. We're happy to help you and, and give you our, our advice. Of course, that the special election periods don't apply to group health insurance. Uh, group health insurance can enroll at any time. If they're currently enrolled in a group, um, they can't change outside of their renewal with the same group carrier, but they can always shop for a different carrier and have coverage effective, um, you know, with the new carrier. There's, there are really no parameters uh, on the group side. So again, I hope that helps. Um, but any questions, you just let us know. The next bullet point is um, going to be in my newsletter. And it's really specific to Aetna Group and the 51 to 99 market. And I'm putting it in here because I think as we get closer to the summer um, and to 12-1, you're going to see carriers coming out, more carriers, I should say, coming out with the option to have like a 17-month renewal or, or extending their programs well into 2016 so that they essentially can bypass, bypass the employer responsibility um, for 
a good bulk of the year, if not the entire year of 2016. So specifically to Aetna, again, it's for the 51 to 99 market, and it's going to start with 5-1 renewals. Um, looks like it's going to run from 5-1 to 9-1 renewals. They are going to be given their renewals starting with 5-1, um, and then they're going to be given the ability to lock in rates for another 12 months starting October 1st through September 30th of 16, and possibly then renew again as is for 10-1 of 16. Again, that would that would almost for this situation, well, not almost, it would get your group client um, essentially outside the mandate until October of 2017. So it's going to extend that, that portion of the health plan without really having to necessarily adhere to some of the, the mandates and the higher rates if, if they currently have a non PPACA plan. So again, watch for information and keep watching because I, I'm telling you other carriers are going to be doing this, uh, which is, I think, certainly beneficial. So the next the next bullet point talks about the proposed changes to the summary of benefits of coverage. And although it is just a proposal, um, I thought it was important enough to not only include in the newsletter, but to discuss a little bit. Um, you know, it, it's, it's almost comical it, <laughs> for my cynical opinion because the first proposal, the first change is to shorten the SBC template to two and a half double-sided pages instead of four. So that's certainly a benefit. They're going to also delete references to the annual limits for essential benefits and pre-existing conditions because, of course, those are no longer applicable. Um, the SBC proposal changes um, will also have a statement whether the coverage meets the minimum essential coverage and provides minimum value. Um, they're, they're proposing to also offer a new coverage example. Currently, they have examples of a routine birth and delivery, and then, of course, management of type 2 diabetes. They're proposing that they're going to add an example of an emergency routine visit for a simple foot fracture, so an example of how that coverage would work for each specific plan. They're also talking about expanding the uniform glossary um, to six pages. So that's why it's comical to me because they're reducing the actual template but increasing the uniform um, glossary and adding new definitions for claims, screening, referrals, specialty drugs, and it, it goes on. And uh, it's, of course, in the in, in uh, trying to make sure that the health uh, consumer and participant understand the terminology. And then they're also going to talk about the issuer website. For every SBC that is released from the carriers, each carrier should make reference to their website. So nothing earth-shattering, but again, something that I thought um, was worthy of note. The next bullet point talks again about ERISA protection. It's just a reminder, uh, we do partner with Prime Pay on the ERISA protection. We, of course, purchased it ourselves uh, just because we thought it was, again, important enough to make sure that we're compliant. The DOL is auditing um, to make sure that employers have their summary of plan documents in place. These are not to be confused with summary of benefits of coverage. It really is um, just a, a, a guideline for what's available and who the, um, who the benefits, health and welfare benefits would be offered to. And Prime Pay, I think does a good job. They have you know, different fees based on the group size. For groups of 1 to 49, there is a $250 setup fee and then a $500 annual fee. If they have to file a 5500 form, that's an additional $275. It's the same uh, setup fee of $250 for a group up to 99. Um, the difference in a 50 to 99 group is there is an 850 annual fee. So information um, about the ERISA program will be going out as well. Um, if your group is audited and they don't have these, these documents in place, there could be up to $110 per day per
per employee per health and welfare benefit fine. So it could get certainly very substantial. It's an easy, relatively easy thing to do. Um, you know, it's certainly passing a, a bit more cost onto the employer, which is not what we want to see for anybody. But in the long run, it could potentially save them thousands, tens of thousands. Next bullet point, I mentioned this last week, is uh, the Pennsylvania Association of Health Underwriter. It, health, health, health Underwriters, excuse me, is having their uh, annual day on the Hill. It's set for April 21st. We do have a lot of issues to discuss at the state level, such as navigator legislation to make sure that consumers are protected and that there is a a, a clearinghouse and vetting of navigators to make sure that they pass a criminal background check. Um, and also with the advent, the, most likely the advent of a state-based exchange. Again, it, it's definitely timely and important enough that if you have an interest in, in you know, fighting the good, good cause, then I would encourage you to attend. You are not going to ever be alone with a legislator that you have to come up with, you know, brilliant ideas. Uh, you will always travel in teams. And if you've not done it, it's a lot of fun. It's very informative in many ways. So, and it's, and it's something that you can do to help preserve your industry. Unfortunately, I am not going to be able to attend. Um, you know, I have a, another obligation. and. Uh, but there's a lot of friendly faces there, people that you would know in the industry. So again, I encourage you to attend. If you have questions on that, you let me know. Uh, URL's Leaders Conference, uh, which is being held on May 7th, um, we are full. We have no more seats available. So at this point, if you've not registered and you do have an interest in registering, let me know. We're going to be starting a waiting list. Um, closer to the event on May 7th, we will be calling and making sure that uh, the people that have registered are still going to be attending and hopefully some seats will open up. But it, it, it is a great event. It's going to be informative on all lines that URL offers. We're going to have, I believe, 17 or 19 sponsors and carriers there being represented in uh, breakout sessions. So it's going to be informative and you know it's also good to meet other people in your industry and, and kind of trade ideas. Last bullet point I'm excited about, uh, we did launch a group health bonus program and it could be pretty lucrative in my opinion, um, easy to qualify for and you will get um, $100 if you submit 10 group health quotes during the bonus period, which is started yesterday and runs through June 10th. You just have to submit 10 group health quotes to us. So you'll get $10, uh, $10 or $100 for each of those, I'm sorry, for, for meeting that parameter, submitting 10 group quotes is $100. And then if you sell one of those groups, it's $100 additional. Um, so you could earn up to $1,100 for submitting group uh, through URL. Definitely something to look into. And again, if you have additional questions on that, I'm happy to answer any of those questions. So that brings us up to the end of our agenda for today. I'm going to open it up for questions. We do have some questions um, already posted. If you do have a question and want to answer it live, go ahead and, and raise your hand at this point. And uh, while you're typing in and formulating your questions, just a reminder that we do hold these webinars every Thursday at 9.30. <clears throat> the next webinar is next Thursday, April 9th. And again, it's at 9.30. So I encourage you to, to participate. If you register, you're at least going to get the recording. Um, even if you register and find out that you had a, another obligation or if something came up, you will still get the recording. Okay, so the question is, Bill says, one special election period they don't broadcast is medically needy, such as an emergency or hospitalization. Um, that's true, Bill. And um, that one, I'm trying to look here. If, yeah, see, those are not really listed. Let me, let me do a little research on that one, Bill. 
and it may be on healthcare.gov as well, more detail. So go ahead and log into healthcare.gov, but I will, uh, I will update everyone on those details next week. And Sean says, can we get copies of our group SBCs? You can, Sean. Um, we don't post all of them on our website. Uh, so if you have a specific plan that you want, uh, you just let us know and we'll get those to you in PDF. Kelly has a rather long question, um, so I'm going to read it and hopefully be able to answer it. It is a special election period question. She says she has a woman who is enrolled on the market place on a United Healthcare plan. Her local hospital is dropping their contract with United Healthcare as a 5-1. That means pretty much all the doctors and a 30 mile radius in the 30 mile radius will no longer be accepting the health plan. And she's already called eight different primaries. None will see her. She's called four gynecologists. None will see her. She has an HMO plan, which means she won't have to, she won't have any coverage if she goes out of network. Any, any way does this qualify as a special election period? She needs to change carriers. Um, let You know what, Kelly? Um, I believe that that might fit into one of the qualifying events. So I'm going, I'll, I'll reach out to you after the program and see what we can, what we can do. I mean, at face value, it's not, but maybe we can work it into work it into a a special election period. I'm sorry, I was trying to read and talk at the same time. Clearly I can't multitask today. <laughs> um, Sean says exactly what documents does the business owner need to have in the file to be ERISA compliant? They they need their RAP, RAP document that outlines every health and welfare benefit, or they need a summary of plan document specifying each health and welfare benefit. And it's as simple as that. So if you have a group of two plus, Sean, and they, they don't have like a section 125 in place that incorporates the RAP document, or it's not been updated um, to incorporate any material change recently, then they probably are not compliant. And I would say about 99% of the groups out there are not compliant. And there's something, I don't know what's on the screen. Okay, Scott says, he's come across groups that have converted from group insurance to individual and are paying the individual coverage. What entity is monitoring that? Got no entity is really monitoring it, but I can tell you, and this 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 really is has been an issue. Um, an employer, the DOL came out in September of 2013 and said that the um, the employer cannot pay for any portion of the individual premium. Prior to that, an employer could set up a, a health reimbursement arrangement or through the Section 125, a premium reimbursement arrangement, but that has uh, gone away. And you could, your employers could get a fine for paying for individual health insurance. The best way and the only way that we see to accomplish this is to have the employer bump up the salary and then wash his or her hands of the situation. The employer can't bump up the salary and say, I'm bumping up your salary, but you have to go get health insurance or I'm not going to do it. It can't be contingent upon them purchasing health insurance. So, you know, I've said this before, if the employer wants, wants um, the oversight and the security that the employees have insurance, then they need to be in the group market if they want to, at this point, with the rates being as they are, save premium dollars and it may be beneficial to the employees to have coverage uh, through subsidies or with subsidies, then the employer has to make that decision. But at that, that point, they're out of the game. They have no control over what their employees can or can't do. And Tracy mentioned a great point. An employer can, if the employees purchase a, a health savings account or a qualified health plan, uh, can put money 
directly into the health savings account for the employees, and the employer then can reap the tax benefit if the money goes directly from the employer into the account. So anything that the employer does to deposit into the HSA is a tax write-off for the employer. So that's a great point, Tracy. So if, if the employees do choose a health savings account and the employer is offering money to start or fund the health savings account, um, then that might be a happy, uh, you know, compromise. And that looks like it for our questions today. Um, once again, I really appreciate everyone joining in, and uh, hopefully you'll join us next year. And I'm sorry, next week, next year as well, but <laughs> next week. And, um, you know, one last thing, hopefully it won't offend anyone, but I, I wish you a very happy Easter weekend uh, or just a, a wonderful spring weekend in general. And, uh, again, thank you for your partnership. Enjoy your day. Bye-bye.